فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين ما بعد وعند كتاب التبيان في اداب حملة القران written by الامام محي الدين ابي زكريا يحيى بن شرف النووي رحمه الله تعالى قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى فصل في اخلاق معلم القران وينبغي للمعلم ان يتخلق بالمحاسن التي ورد الشرع بها والخلال الحميدة والشيم المرضية التي أرشد إليها من الزهادة في الدنيا والتقلل منها وعدم المباهاة وعدم المبالاة بها وبأهلها والسخاء والجود ومكارم الأخلاق وطلاقة الوجه من غير خروج إلى حد الخلاعة والحلم والصبر والتنزه عن دنيء الاكتساب وملازمة الورع والخشوع والسكينة والوقار والتواضع والخضوع واجتناب الضحك والاكثار من المزح وملازمة الوظائف الشرعية كالتنظف بإزالة الأوساخ وشعور التي ورد الشرع بإزالتها كقص الشارب وتقليم الأظافر وتسريح اللحية وإزالة الروائح الكريهة وإزالة الروائح الكريهة والملابس المكروهة وليحذر كل الحذر من الحسد والرياء والرياء والعجب واحتقار غيره وإن كان دونه وينبغي أن يستعمل الأحاديث الواردة في التسبيح والتهليل ونحوهما من الأذكار والدعوات وأن يراقب الله وأن يراقب الله تعالى في سره وعلى نيته ويحافظ على ذلك وأن يكون تعويله في جميع أموره على الله تعالى It is also incumbent upon the teacher to possess the praiseworthy characteristics prescribed by Islam and the admirable, and the admirable manners and pleasant conduct that Islam guides to. The author, so here, Rahimullah, wants that the student, sorry, the teacher, akhlaq that the teacher of the Quran has to come with. That the teacher comes with characteristics, he comes with attributes in which. The Sharia has come and spoke regarding, and the author then mentions what are, what are they, such as including renouncing the worldly life. So the author, the Sheikh, and the teacher of the Quran, his characteristics is min al-zahadati fi dunya, his aesthetic. In other words, he does not in any way, form, or shape run after worldly gain. And he's not a person whose heart is directed towards the dunya. He's more focused on the hereafter. So, min al zahadati fi dunya. No. And taking of it only what one needs. He only takes from this dunya wa taqalluli minha. He only takes from this dunya the bare minimum. His job as a teacher is akhirah, the hereafter. As for this dunya, bare minimum. Whatever he could provide for his kids and his family. That's all he wants to. It's not about accumulating and gathering wealth and money, not in any way, form or shape. Naam. And the lack of concern for worldly masses and for those who concern themselves with such masses. So he doesn't busy himself with worldly matters, nor does he even talk about dunya. A man of the Quran does not talk to the people about business and investment. And this is the reality of a lot of Quran teachers. They're talking to the students about a dunya and they talk to them about how to attain money. And so this belittles the affairs of the Quran. Because the person is looking at you, the man who's, who's engaged in the dunya, the man who is given everything of his heart to the dunya, when he looks at you and you, as the man of the Quran, 
and he sees you running after the dunya, then he affects how he sees the Quran. Now, the teacher must also be generous, giving and of excellent demeanor. The, one of the things that the Quran teacher is known for is if Allah gives him wealth, he brings it to his students and he shares it with them. He's a person who says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us rizq today. Oh students, come let's share. So whatever food that people give him, whatever anything may provide for him, or whatever means of wealth that he may have, he provides it. And Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak, it was said that he used to take his students to Hajj every year. He used to always take his students Hajj every year, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, because of the wealth Allah gave him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you don't find that. It's hard to find a teacher who's concerned about his students' wealth and their financial situation. And uh, even busies himself with wanting to know what his students, uh, their daily maintenance is. No. As well as cheerful without going to the extent of being frivolous and insensible. The teacher's talaqatul wajhi, he opens his face, he smiles. That the teacher is known to smile. Min ghayru khurujin ila haddil khala'ati. But he smiles and he is joyful, but it doesn't go outside the uh, restricted uh, limits. He doesn't just laugh and smile to the extent where, subhanallah, it becomes khala'a. Khala'a means it's beyond the appropriate limits. That the person now is, uh, as you would say, he's joking too much. No. He must be kind, patient, and far removed from making an inappropriate or unbecoming living. The author, as the author now here mentions, that one of the characteristics of the Quran teacher is al-hil, forbearance. That he can carry the uh, hardship that his students put, they put him through. Hil means forbearance. He can bear the, the, the hardship that come to him from, from his students. Sometimes the students would have bad manners towards you. Was sabri and patience. And he's patient every day, knowing that this, this path that he has taken, which is to teach the Quran, is not what's bringing a livelihood for him. Uh, it brings him just, you know, uh, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dar of akhirah. It doesn't bring him dunya. So he's patient upon that every day. And he also stays away from, if he's a Quran teacher, he If he's a Quran teacher, he should generally try to have his own job, or his own work on the side. But the author says, he says, stay away from Stay away from a job where he's belittled. A teacher shouldn't work at a place where he's being belittled, and he's being humiliated, and he's being put down. Well, he shouldn't work in a kind of job where if his students find out that the teacher works there, it's not good for him. So he works in a decent job. He works in a decent job. Now, He must be consistently pious, humble, tranquil, venerable, and modest. All of these are characteristics that are consistent with the Quran teacher. Mulazamat al wara. He's consistent, he has wara. Any doubtful matters that come to him, whether it's halal or haram, he always takes the safe side. Al khushur, humility. Al sakinat wal waqar, tranquility. He's calm and collective. Wal tawab, the teacher is humble, uh, so he's humble, naam. That the teacher is what? Tawab means humble. He doesn't see himself to be higher than his students and greater than them and he belittles them. Naam. Khudu' humility for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. He must avoid excessive laughter. And so he doesn't laugh too much. Which tinabu dahiki. Excessive laughing. Naam. And joking around while always remembering to undertake religious tasks such as cleanliness through ridding himself of impurities and the trimming of any hair that is prescribed for him to trim such as the moustache. The author here mentions that ikthar min al-mazhi. He shouldn't joke too much. If he does joke every now and then, but he shouldn't joke too much. Al-ikthar is not excessive in that. وَمُلَازَمَةِ الْوَضَائِفِ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ And he also upholds the uh, legislational uh, tasks that are set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala onto him. Like for example, التَنَظُّفْ بِإِزَالَةِ الْأَوْسَاخِ وَالشُّعُورِ الَّتِي وَرَدَ الشَّرْعِ بِإِزَالَةِ Any hair that he should cut, from his body parts, he should get rid of that as a teacher. For example, armpits hair, he should get rid of nails. If his nails grow, he cuts them. He shortens his moustache. Uh, the author here mentions, وتسريح اللحيتي, he combs his, his beard. وإزالة الروائح الكريهة والملابس المكروهة. And he also gets rid of the bad odor that he may have, that he doesn't smell bad. Uh, and he gets rid of clothing where there may be bad smell to it. In other words, the teacher looks sharp. 
نعم. He wants to do everything he can to avoid jealousy, boastfulness, self-admiration and contempting of others even if they happen to be inferior to him. The author here he says well يحذر كل الحذر that he's always cautious and he stays away from من الحسد jealousy والريا showing off والعجبي conceit he's full of himself واحتقار غيره and belittling anyone other than himself وإن كان دونه even if it's even if they are below him even if they are below him he shouldn't come with these characteristics وينبغي and it's also required from him أن يستعمل الأحاديث الواردة في التصبيح نعم والتهليل And this is a point to practice the teachings of the Hadith narrated with regards to the importance and virtues of making tasbih and tahleel and others uh, such and other such forms of, remem of remembrance and supplication. So the, the, te the teacher he's known to use a lot of tasbih and takbir and tahleel and tahmeed. He's la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, takbir. His adkar is on his tongue all the time. You see, makes dua a lot. ويراقب الله تعالى في سره وعلانيته. He observes Allah in his private affairs and in his public affairs. When he's in the public domain and when he's in the private, uh, in a in a chamber of his house. ويحافظ على غير ذلك. And he also protects and safeguards anything other than that. ويكون تعويله في جميع أموره على الله تعالى. And in all of his affairs, he comes back to Allah. That he has a very strong bond with Allah سبحانه وتعالى. He's connected. He's truly rooted in his religious faith. No. Uh, Now the author Rahimullah says, فصل في إحسان المعلم لطالب القرآن وينبغي له أن يرفق وينبغي له أن يرفق بمن يقرأ عليه ويرحب به ويحسن إليه بحسب حالهما فقد روينا عن أبي هارون العبدي قال كنا نأتي أبي سعيد كنا نأتي أبا سعيد الخذري رضي الله عنه فيقول مرحبا بوصية رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الناس لكم تبع إن الناس لكم تبع وإن رجالا يأتونكم من قطار الأرض يتفقهون في الدين فإذا أتوكم فاستأس فإذا أتوكم فاستوصوا بهم خيرا راه الترمذي وابن ماجة وغيرهما وروينا نحوه في مسند الدارمي عن أبي درداء عن عن أبي درداء رضي الله عنه. He the teacher must be gentle with his students, welcoming them and treating each in accordance with his needs. The teacher here the characteristics that he should have is أن يرفق بما يقرأ عليه. The person who's reading the Quran on him, he should be very gentle towards them. Gentle. وَيُرَحِّبَ بِهِ And he also welcomes the student and says to the student, you're welcome. Come. At the he, doesn't, he doesn't just say you're welcome, but he makes the student feel welcomed. وَيُحْسِنَ إِلَيْهِ And he is good towards them. Excellence towards the student. بِحَسَبِ حَالِهِمْ All of this in accordance to the student. In accordance to them. Now, It is narrated that Abu Harun al Abdi once said, We used to go to Abu Sa'id al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, and he used to say to us, We welcome you in accordance to the directives given to us by the Prophet. So here he's saying, We used to, uh, Abu Harun al Abdi is saying, We used to come to Abu Sa'id al Khudri, and he would say to us, Marhaban. Marhaban means welcome. He would greet the students. When based on what? Bi wasiyyati Rasulullah. Wasiyya means that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us regarding your affairs. Inna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala that the Prophet said. Indeed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, people will follow you and men will come to you from all corners of the world seeking to understand their religion. And so when they come to you, treat them with kindness. So this is what the Prophet said, they said, uh, that Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, Inna al-Nasa lakum taba'un, that the people follow you. There's going to come a time where people want to take knowledge from you guys. They want to, add, you know, uh, gain and attain that knowledge from you. So what do you do? وَإِنَّ رِجَالًا يَأْتُوا لَكُمْ مِنْ أَقْطَارِ الْأَرْضِ And people are going to come to you from أقطار الأرض. أقطار means the corners of the earth. They're going to come to you from every direction. يَتَفَقَّهُونَ فِي الدِّينِ Their reason and their goal is to understand the deen of Allah. That's what they want. فَإِذَا أَتَوْكُمْ If they come to you, فَاسْتَوْصُوا بِهِمْ خَيْرًا Then what you need to do is, Advise them with good. Benefit them. 
don't waste their time. Don't waste that student's time who has traveled to you from far places or from the world, but benefit them. And also what did the Prophet say in that hadith? When they do come to you, say to them, Marhaban bi wasiyati Rasulullah. This hadith scholars differed on its authenticity, we're not going to now go into it. Fasrun fi nusha al muallimi li talib al Qurani wa ikramihi. وينبغي أن يبذل لهم النصيحة فإن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الدين النصيحة الدين النصيحة لله ولكتابه ولرسوله ولأئمة المسلمين وعمتهم رواه مسلم ومن النصيحة لله تعالى ولكتابه إكرام قارئه وطالبه وإرشاده وإرشاده إلى مصلحته والرفق به ومساعدته على طلبه بما أمكن والتألف قلب الطالب وأن يكون سمحا بتعليمه في رفق متلطفا به محرضا له على التعلم وينبغي له أن يذكره فضيلة ذلك ليكون سببا في نشاطه وزيادة في رغبته ويزهده في الدنيا ويصرفه عن الركون إليها والاغترار بها ويذكره أن أن الاشتغال بالقرآن وسائر العلوم الشرعية هو الطريق هو طريق هو هو طريقة الحازمين وعباد وعباد الله العارفين وأن ذلك رتبة الأنبياء صلوات الله وسلامه عليه مجمعين وينبغي أن يحنو على الطالب وينبغي أن يحنو على الطالب ويعتني بمصالحه كاعتنائه بمصالح نفسه ومصالح ولده ويجري المتعلم مجر ولده في الشفقة عليه والاهتمام ببص واهتمام بمصالحه والصبر على جفائه وسوء أدبه ويعذره في قلة أدبه في بعض الأحيان فإن الإنسان معرض للنقائص لا سيما إذا كان صغير السن وينبغي أن يحب له ما يحب لنفسه من الخير وأن يكره له ما يكره لنفسه من النقص مطلقا فقد ثبت في الصحيحين عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه وعن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال أكرم الناس علي جليسي الذي يتخطى الناس حتى يجلس إلي لو استطعت أن لا يقع الذباب على وجهي لفعلت وفي رواية إن الذباب لا يقع عليه فيؤذيني وينبغي أن لا يتعظم على المتعلمين بل يلين لهم ويتواضع معهم فقد جاء في التواضع لأحاد الناس أشياء كثيرة معروفة معروفة فكيف بهؤلاء الذين هم بمنزلة أولاده مع ما هم عليه من اشتغال بالقرآن مع ما لهم عليه من حق الصحبة وترددهم إليه وقد جاء عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لينوا لمن تعلمون لينوا لمن تعلمون ولمن تتعلمون منه وعن أيوب السختياني رحمه الله تعالى ينبغي للعالم أن يضع التراب على رأسه تواضعا لله عز وجل It is a wonder teacher to advise the students because the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Raise your voice, say it loud, as loud as you can. Okay. It is a wonder teacher to advise the students because the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Religion is advice. They said, to whom? He replied, to Allah, his book, his messenger, the leaders of the Muslims and the common people. Do you want me to put that? Mm. No, not wasting brackets. No, not in brackets. Advice to Allah and His Messenger necessitates honouring those who read and study the Book of Allah, while guiding them to that which benefits them. 
It is also, it is also so the author here explains to you that the hadith of Abu Ruqayya Tamim ibn Awsin al-Dari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu where the Prophet said ad-deen al-nasiha qulna liman qala lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasulihi wa li a'immati al-muslimin wa aammatihim that what it means nasiha to lillahi ta'ala wa li kitabihi what does it actually mean? So the, prof, the author says, it means ikramu qari'ihi wa talibihi. The one who is reading the Qur'an and the one who is seeking the Qur'an, that you honor them. Wa irshaduhu ila maslahatihi. And that you guide them to that which is beneficial to them. Wa rifqu bihi. And that you're very, you have tenderness and kindness towards them. Wa musa'adatu ala talabihi bima amkan. And that you also help them. Ala talabihi in attaining knowledge. You help them as much as much as you're able. You as a teacher, your job, brothers, is you should make it so easy for the student to learn and to attain knowledge. And also to get the heart of the student. And you also have to be very kind and soft and easy as a person and towards the teaching of the student. مُحَرِّضًا لَهُ عَلَى التعلم. And also you're striving hard in making sure that he attains this علم. نعم. A teacher must also remind his students of the virtues of seeking knowledge so as to increase their motivation and love for this study. So the teacher should make it a norm now. Every now and then to tell the student about the virtues of learning the Qur'an or the virtues of uh, the, mem the one who's memorized the Qur'an. So when the teacher does that, this will increase in the heart of the student uh, the love of the Quran and the student will become enthusiastic he will be more focused and he would want to increase in wanting to learn the Quran even more so if the teacher talks to the student about the virtues of the reciters of the Quran and the readers of the Quran and then the day of judgment Allah is going to say to the half of the kitab Iqra, you know read the Quran uh, and go up your last level the day of judgment is the last verse which you read. That's your last stage. That's your last level. Meaning the half of is just going to read and he's going to ascend and go up and up and up and up until he reaches the last level. The one who hasn't memorized, he's just going to stop at one level because he can't move forward. You see? So the person is going to also read the way that they used to read when they're in the dunya. So you're going to read there with the qira'ah, the tirtil, the calmness, the tranquility that you were reading in the dunya is the way you're going to be reading it there, there that day as well. Does that make sense? So all of that the teacher reminds the student of and he, and he tells him about these virtues. He must also encourage them to renounce worldly gain. So the, teacher, the teacher's job is also to tell the student, leave this dunya. Not that be broke. No, not in any way, form or shape. What it means is that don't make the dunya your final, ultimate goal. Make the Qur'an and the deen of Allah the ultimate goal. The teachers always connected the student to the Qur'an. But brothers, if the teacher himself is too connected to the dunya, and the dunya means everything to him, and he just wants to make money, and that's all it is for him, he will not affect the students. They will also be the same. They will also be the same. If the person is all about money, and that's all he wants, then na'am, it will affect the students as well. He should also remind uh, his students that busying oneself with the Qur'an and other forms of knowledge that pertain to Islam is the path taken by those of serious devotion and by those slaves of Allah who are firmly grounded in knowledge and understanding. And that this way, and that this way, the way of the Prophets, may, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of them. The ones who busy themselves, will you the kirahu, he reminds the student, and al ishtighala bil Qur'an, busy yourself with the Qur'an. Wa sa'ir al ulum al shari'iyati. And also the other sciences of the religion. Busy yourself with it is what? Huwa tariqatu al hazimin wa ibadillah al arifin. It's actually the level of the devoted ones, the pious slaves of Allah, the ones whose legs are rooted, grounded individuals. It is the levels of the prophets. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. So the one who is busy himself with the Qur'an and Islamic sciences and always you see him studying, he's learning. He's actually, as the Shaykh has said here, huwa tariqatul hazimin. It's the path of those who are devoted. وَعِبَادِ الْعَارِفِينَ And the slaves that know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This term, arif, is a Sufi term. They're the ones who use these terms. These words, arif and, and whatnot, are terms which were coined by them. Now, 
The teacher must be compassionate with his students and be concerned with their betterment in much the same way that he is concerned with his own betterment and that of his child. So the teacher, وَيَبَّغِ أَنْ يَحْنُوا عَنِ الطَّالِبِ That the teacher has concern. He has concern for his students. You see, and it, it's the, the concern that he has for his students is like the concern he has for himself and his own children. He cares about his students the way he cares about his own children. You see? And that's how much he's in, he's there in his mind. Just like his children are in his mind and their betterment, he's also got his students in that mindset as well. That he wants the best for them. He wants them to reach the best. He wants them to attain good. He wants them to prosper in life. He, that's what he wants for them. The way he wants it for himself and the way he wants it for his children, that's the same way he wants it for his students. He should also occasionally forgive his misbehavior since no man is perfect, much less one who is still young in age. The teacher must also love for his student what he loves for himself in terms uh, of all that is good and beneficial, while disliking for his students that, he dis that which he dislikes for himself. The teacher's job is sometimes that the student, here the author is saying that sometimes the student that you're teaching which you're educating, sometimes they come with bad manners. Sometimes they will talk or act in an incorrect manner. The teacher, on the other hand now, what does he do? He shows الصبر على جفائه وسوء أدبه. The student's bad manners and his bad dealings and the way he acted, the teacher shows patience. وَيَعْذِرَهُ فِي قِلَّةِ أَدَبِهِ فِي بَعْضِ الْأَحْيَانِ And he sometimes excuses the student for his bad manners. He excuses the student. And he turns a blind eye towards it. The reason is because فَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ مُعَرَّضُ لِلنَّقَائِصِ The reason is because that every single body, every human on the face of this earth is open to deficiency. We're all open to do mistakes. We're all open to come with faults. So the teacher understands that. Also what the teacher should come with, he said, is أَنْ يُحِبَّ لَهُ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ That he loves for his students what he loves for himself. The good that he wishes for himself. The way he wants to become a scholar, the way he wants to attain the best of this world and the hereafter, he wants it for his student. And also, he dislikes and he hates for them that which he hates for himself. The deficiencies, the harm, the pain, he hates it for his students as well. Now, It is narrated in Al-Bukhari and Muslim that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, says, None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So this famous hadith which we all know, that the Messenger says, alayhi salatu wasalam, that one of you is not a true believer. The word la yu'minu here is not a nephew asli iman. Your foundation of iman is not being taken away. In other words, you're not a disbeliever. You're not a disbeliever. Can you give that table? Thank you. Yeah, here's your brother. I was just implemented to be kind to your students. <coughs> so, um, the famous hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, La yu'min, one is not a believer. The negation of Iman here is what? It's not the asal of Iman. It's not the asal of Iman. Meaning, it, the person doesn't become a disbeliever. It just means the complete essence of Iman is gone. Your Iman is no longer complete anymore. So it reduces your Iman when you don't have these characteristics, which is to love for your brother what you love for yourself. You love for your brother what you love for yourself. The scholars, they say that loving for your brother, loving for your brother what you love for yourself is, they say, is religious matters, not worldly matters, by the way. It's not worldly matters, meaning no man loves his wife for anybody else. Zah. But what is meant here by is we're hereafter matters, religious matters. You love for your brother, to become a scholar, a righteous person, an obedient slave of Allah. Just like you, just like you love it for yourself, you love it for them as well. Now, Ibn Abbas, <laughs> may Allah be pleased with him, said, the most revered and beloved of people to me is a student who walks through those sitting in a study circle so that he may sit close to me. If I can stop a fly from resting upon his face, I would. Look at Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, Akramun nasi alayya, the most honorable person to me is Jalisi alladhi yatakhatta al-nasa hatta yajlisa ilayya. A person who would come to my, my gathering, and he, he would come to a gathering and seek knowledge, and he would go through the people and he would sit so close that he's the closest to me. He'll do that. He says, I love this person, I honor this person so much. Law istata'atu, if I was able, Allah yaqa'ud dhubaba ala wajhi, that if I could stop a fly from 
resting on his face, La fa'alta, I would have done that. I would protect everything from him. I would make sure nothing happens to him. Even if I can protect a fly resting on his face, I would have done that. If I was able to, though. Another wording. Yeah, in another uh, narration, uh, he said, it, uh, Rudi means to see a fly rest upon his face. Sometimes he, he said, fayudini. A fly may even rest on his face. And I see, uh, it grieves me, it causes me sadness that I see a fly landing on the face of this honorable person in my eyes. That shows you the what? Loving for his students and Imam and the noble companion Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu how he loved for his students what he loved for himself and this is a characteristic that one needs to look for in himself do you truly love for your student what you love for yourself if you did then you would show so much passion in teaching them educating them passing knowledge onto them <coughs> now the teacher must not be arrogant or condescending towards his students and should instead treat them with gentleness while showing humility the teacher it's not, he shouldn't He shouldn't put him up himself greater than his students and belittle them and say to them You? Gonna be like me? <laughs> Think again He shouldn't be like that He shouldn't be condescending towards his students But he shows them his kindness and generosity and softness Tenderness And he shows humbleness now, much has been narrated on the importance and virtue of being humble, even to the common folk. This is something everybody needs to come with. Humility and humbleness, uh, tawadu, which is humbleness, is a characteristic everybody should come with. He says, الناس, let alone a teacher, this is something everybody needs to come with. Everyone, from the general folks, from the general mass, this is something that they need to come with, which is to be humble. Now. It is hence that much more important to show modesty towards those who are like one's children and those who busy themselves with the study of the Qur'an. So if this is tawadu, is something that had in nas, the general masses need to come with, then it becomes more serious for, some, for people who are like their equal, they're at the stage, at the station of your children. They're like your children now. They are people who are busy themselves with the Book of Allah. It makes more sense for you to be humble for them. Because you're told to be humble for everyone. The Amma to Nas, you're meant to be humble for them. As a Muslim. The one who's in the market that you meet, you should be humble to them. But then it makes more of a reason for you to be humble to a person who's learning the Quran, who's busying himself with the Book of Allah, a person who should be at the station of your children. They're like your kids. Naam. Constantly going back and forth in referral to their teacher. They're coming to you all the time. People who are like this deserve more humbleness to, from you. They're coming back and forth to you all the time. Ha, the companionship that they give you. Taradudihim ilayh. They just keep coming back to you back and forth. Naam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Be gentle with those you teach and those who teach you. So you'd be gentle. Leenu liman tu'allimuna wa liman ta'allamuna minhu. Be gentle, be soft. The ones you are teaching and the ones who are teaching you. So you show gentleness to your students and you also show, you show, you also show uh, gentleness to, to the ones who taught you. And this hadith again, its authenticity is questioned. Now, Ayyub al Sakhtiani, may Allah have mercy on him, once said, the scholar must place sand on his head in humbleness and humility to Allah, the, the Almighty. The, uh, the great noble Imam Abu, uh, the great noble Imam Ayyub al Sakhtiani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, his name uh, Ayyub al Sakhtiani was from the great noble Imams. He was called Sakhtiani because he used to sell skin in Basra as Abu Umar ibn Abdul Barr mentions in his Kitab al tamhid the first volume page 339 Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani rahimahullah he said it is upon a scholar 
that he places the dust and the sand on his face. In humility of Allah. Sometimes the teacher needs to humble himself and humiliate himself. And he places the dust and the sand on, him, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on his face. And the face of the person is the most honorable part. So that means you need to put yourself low.